Mary Mead and welcome to the Witch's Cauldron. My name's Paula. Today's subject is going to be symbol interpretation and uh, with a view toward divination. Um, now, I'm going to put this out here. These symbols are not all inclusive. Um, you can see that Rocky is now photo bombing. He has to come in and say hello in every video. So that's his little white tail there. Um, anyhow, the, this is just a starting point for interpreting symbols. And one of the best sources that I found when I was first starting out was Green Witchcraft by Ann Mora. Now, um, if any of you have been following my channel for any amount of time, you will know that I don't necessarily ascribe to any, or condone everything, agree with everything that Ann Mora writes, especially um, in her book on uh, the origins of modern witchcraft. It's got a lot of great um, historical information, but a lot of her prose that she put in there was a little bit off-putting. So, um, however, um, I do enjoy her books for what they are. And she had in Green Witchcraft one of the best like little charts that, for helping me to start interpreting symbols very early on in my journey. Now, as I have gone along, um, I have developed my own way of communicating with spirit. My guides have got certain ways that they communicate with me to get me to understand what they're saying. Um, and so they put things in a frame of reference that means something to me a lot of times. Um, as you travel your path, um, you will undoubtedly develop your own set of symbols and what they mean and how they play into the bigger picture as you're doing divination, dream interpretation, psychic readings, or communicating with spirit, okay? Now, divination in and of itself, it's a way for you to get a glimpse of what's going on right now, what happened in the past, and what's going to happen. So there are three paths that your divination can take you down. Um, it is, I'm going to say, it's like any other skill. You really have to work at it and hone it to get it to work well. Don't expect to get everything like that because that's just not the way that it's going to work for you. Um, it is like any skill. Uh, the more you use it, the more adept you become. If you don't use it, then it's going to be harder for you to interpret what's being uh, shown to you. And there are many, many different types of divination. Um, what we're going to get into uh, are just like general symbols. Other videos in this series are going to be on runes. Uh, there's going to be a series of videos on tarot. I already have some that go really deep dive into um, the, some of the major arcana. I've got to get back to recording those videos again. Um, also, you know, you've got I Ching, you've got numerology. Um, and there are so many different types of divination that are out there. And um, I'm going to, I'm not going to develop, I'm not going to devote an entire video on the many different types of divination. But instead, I will link in the description box a link to a Google Doc that tells you about the different types of uh, divination that there are. I mean, there are some people who use uh, the entrails of an animal to um, try and, div you know, perform divination. So there are a whole bunch of different ways to do divination. Um, I'm going to cover ones that are more common, like scrying, runes, 
tarot, okay? And the symbols that I'm going to go over really play into um, a lot with scrying. Um, I'm going to get in another video a little more in depth, but I wanted to get to the symbols first. Um, so I don't, I myself have been doing this for so long, I don't remember everything, okay? I have to look things up once in a while myself. Um, so don't be really hard on yourself. Don't think that you have to sit here and memorize anything. That's why I'm giving you a Google Doc in the description box um, to all of the things plus some. I'm not going over every symbol that Ann Moore went over in Green Witchcraft, um, but there is a Google Doc that is a more comprehensive list than what I am going to be speaking about, okay? One of the most um, often asked questions is, I saw X, Y, and Z happen in a dream, or I keep seeing spiders. What does this mean? I keep, you know, bunny rabbits keep running across my yard. What does this mean? And oftentimes that can be spirit trying to talk to you. It can be your guides and uh, your guardians trying to give you um, information that you need. So that all comes down to learning the symbols. For instance, um, if you see like an airplane, okay, and I'll pop the, the meanings up here somewhere <laughs> in the screen. I can never remember which side it's on. So like if you see an airplane, that can be a new project, but it can also be an obvious uh, symbol for travel yet to come. And it's usually longer distance travel. Conversely, if you see a car, then that usually means like um, local travel or movement in your business affairs, okay? If you see like a, a ship at anchor, um, Anchors typically mean um, security, a rest period because the boat's not moving. Uh, it also can mean uh, an upcoming voyage, or it can also mean that you are coming to solution on a problem that you've been working on. And the boat is usually about discovery, discoveries, travel, and companionship. So with those two together, and you may be solving an issue within a relationship, okay? It all depends on where your intuition is telling you to go, and your intuition in divination plays a very, very big part of what you end up figuring out along the way, okay? Whether it's tarot, runes, anything, sometimes your intuition leads you down a path to get to where you need to be for the querent or for yourself, okay? Um, butterflies. Um, I get asked this a lot because a lot of times if you have a butterfly that flits around you or lands on you, that's actually spiritual contact. Um, usually from a loved one. Um, it can be uh, speaking to the soul and your soul. Um, it can also be that you're feeling a little, um, it's reminding you to not be frivolous with things. Um, and it can also mean a, a bit of insinc insincerity. I cannot speak today. Um, so you have to always take everything else that's going around in your vision to kind of put everything in context, okay? Um, another really common one are bridges. You know, people getting stuck on a bridge or they're on a bridge and it falls, things like that. Bridges are usually transitions to a different um, state, a different being. It can also mean crossing to new endeavors. 
and it can mean partnerships and travel okay usually what I see is you're transitioning from you know one point in your life to another point let's say your your kids are growing up and they're going off to college okay you're bridging that empty nest okay um, cats if cats show up um, they usually are bringers of wisdom and also um, access to the spirit world um, they sometimes represent a female friend or they can also be indicative of um, problems with your home life or domestic problems okay now if you see a cauldron okay we're going to get into a little bit of our witchy symbols this is representative of the goddess it's also representative of transformation ending of something and beginning of something else um, it's vitality um, for me it's also um, this is one of my personal interpretations a gaining of knowledge that you did not have before this can be knowledge about a relationship it can be knowledge about a business affair or whatever okay but it's gaining of knowledge of some kind that you did not possess before um, another thing is your broom or your besom okay a broom can is another symbol of the goddess um, it's about purification healing um, ending of a problem and changes that are coming especially with regard regard to your household um, now if you see you know a cradle you know not necessarily with a baby in it but all all of a sudden there's like you see a cradle um, that's usually a new idea or a new project a beginning of something new or it's newcomers coming into your life all right um, if you see a cornucopia um, those are usually indicative of the goddess of abundance fertility prosperity and they are also for protection okay a form of protection if you see a cross it's usually a symbol of the god um, and Na the power of nature okay um, a cup you know the the old the cup runneth over or the cup is empty usually is love harmony your very close friendships or a gift okay so if you have that empty cup usually that's you know a sign that there is something missing from a relationship that is near and dear to you okay a dagger or you know just about any kind of um, you know like knife weapon um, means complications dangers power and skill okay um, the crescent okay the crescent moon that is a symbol of the goddess it is also wishes being granted um, a fresh idea a state of newness okay um, a dog uh, we did cats we got to give our our canine friends equal equal time here a dog is a symbol of fidelity loyalty friendship companionship and faithfulness okay an egg um, that is a symbol of luck it's a symbol of increase or fertility it's also creativity um, and it's a new start however if there are whole bunches of eggs it can be hoarding okay a fence um, this is like keeping your possessions you know a retention of possessions it's also a defense and it's also isolation because that that um, fence is keeping others out okay um, if you see a flag this is usually a warning 
Um, it can also be an identification with a group or ideals. Um, and it can also mean that you're going to be on the defensive, defensiveness, okay? Flame or fire. Um, this is change, domination of the will, and purification, okay? Flowers. Um, these are often indicative of um, marriage, passing joy, because, you know, the cut flowers, when you first get them are great, but they're gone within a couple of days. And depending on what else is going on in that reading that or those sets of symbols that you're receiving, it can be an unhappy love affair, okay? Um, <clears throat> a gun, if that shows up. Um, in your interpretations. It would be, this is any kind of gun, whether it's a handgun, a cannon, a, a rifle, any type of gun, all right? It's a power to gain the goals. It's discord. It can be uh, slander, and it can also in, be indicative of infidelity. Um, a hammer. Um, that can be hard work being rewarded, building something new, your creativity, but it can also be fortitude, okay? Um, let's see, a heart. Um, that's love, pleasure, confidence, and strength of will, all right? Um, an hourglass. That is usually a warning of caught for you to use caution, and it's also a symbol for passage of time. All right, a knot. Okay, that is restrictions. It's marriage, and it's also bindings. Okay, it may you may be getting, you know, the message that you need to bind something, either a bad habit of yours or bind someone from harming you, okay? A house or home, that's security, it's success, it's comfort, and it's also having authority, like authority over your own domain, all right? If you see a ladder, okay, and you go up a ladder, it's a rise in status. If you're going down the ladder, it's a fall of status. Um, and it's also can be initiating you getting to that next level if you're going up, okay? Um, let's see, if you see a lion, that is usually indicative of power, strength, influence, ferocity, pride, and domination. All you've got to think about is like personality traits of your typical Leo. Hello. <laughs> And if you see a lock, um, it's usually for protection. It's something being concealed. Um, it's security. It can be an obstacle. Um, and it can be something that is sealed off, especially when you are doing readings on another person. If you see a locked door, that is something that they do not want you to access. So before you try and open that door, ask them if you want, if they want you to go there or if they want you to leave it alone. Most of the time, when you're first starting doing readings for someone, they will tell you to leave it alone. That's just a, a, a warning sign to you when you start doing readings and things, okay? Um, a mirror can be uh, reversal, you know, throwing something back on someone or on you. Um, it's a symbol of karma, but it's also a symbol of knowledge because some of the most effective scrying that I do is with a black mirror, okay? Um, if you have an unknown man in your vision, this can be a visitor or a very helpful strange stranger okay the moon this is indicative of intuition and w intuitive wisdom and guidance and the goddess 
okay? A mountain usually stands for some type of hindrance, uh, an obstacle, a journey, a challenge, but it's also being steadfast. Think about that mountain and how long it's been there, okay? Um, if you see a mouse in your vision, that's usually a symbol of poverty, a theft, the need to being frugal, and being inconspicuous, all right? If you happen to see an owl, a lot of people are afraid that owls bring death, that they're bringers of death, and that's not necessarily the case. Owls are a symbol of wisdom and a symbol of spirit trying to communicate with you, all right? If you happen to see a purse, or as we say, you know, back in the, back in the hills, a pocketbook. Um, this is monetary gain and keeping the need to keep your possessions close to you, okay? Because there could be some kind of a threat of theft, all right? Um, if you see a ring of some kind, that's usually uh, eternity because it's an unbreakable circle, okay? It goes around and around with no end. Um, it's also about containment, a symbol of the wheel of life or the wheel of the year, and it's also indicative of a wedding, okay? A rose. A rose is indicative of love, of lost love or a past love, um, fullness of life, healing, and caring, okay? Now, the color of the roses can kind of feed into things as well. Um, usually red roses are a deep, you know, a deep abiding love. A pink is more indicative of the love you feel like for family. A white is, you know, a friendship. Um, unless there are, you know, specific roses that someone from that in spirit that you're communicating with. Like when I see yellow roses, that's my mom, because that was her favorite flower, was yellow roses. Um, scales. This is a, the need for balance. It's also justice being meted out, and it could be being meted out to you. It could be meted out to someone else in your favor. Um, so, and it's also a need for you to take a step back and evaluate everything very carefully. Um, let's see, salt is stability, cleansing, grounding, and purity, all right? Um, the sun, okay, that's indicative of the God, success, energy, and power. Um, a snake, that is both the God and the goddess. It's wisdom, it's immortality, it's knowledge, and it's a prophecy. Let's talk about that spider, okay, that I mentioned earlier, seeing spiders all over the place. That's good luck, industry, but it can also be entrapments and secrecy and cunning. And for me, when I see, you know, like spiders, especially around like my front door or right outside the patio door, um, they're telling me to embrace and let my creative juices flow. And usually that's when it's telling me to pick up uh, a novel that I've been writing for a little while and do work on that. And usually that's, uh, you know, when I really get a creative burst um, is when I start seeing spiders all over the place. Now, a sword uh, can be power, strife, conflict, and overcoming an adversity. A star is good luck, divine protection, opportunity, success, and destiny. A wheel is completion, it's eternity, it's seasons of the year, seasons of life, cycles of life, it's rebirth, and it's gains. And if you have to happen to see a unicorn come through uh, your uh, divination, um, those are usually symbolic of purity, blessings from the Fae, and 
intervention by the other world. In other words, otherworldly powers are becoming involved in something. Um, another one, a tree. That's blessings of nature, good fortune, stability, power, and security. So, as I said, um, there will be a link to a Google Doc down in the description box with these symbols and with the different types of divination down in the description box. Always be sure to check the description box because usually that's where I put notes for the videos. There are a couple that don't have um, notes, but usually my, my teaching ones, like this one, um, have notes in the in the description box. The ones on tarot do not, but my Wicca Witchcraft 101, 201, 301 videos usually have a document, a Google Doc link in the description box. I'm also going to link um, to the books where this information came from. Um, one of them is Ann Mora, uh, Green Witchcraft, and the other is Crystal Balls and Crystal Bowls by Ten <laughs> Ted Andrews. Try saying that with my southern accent and not have them sound exactly the same. Anyway, my friends, I hope you enjoyed this. I, I cannot believe how much my channel has grown here in the last few months. I so appreciate everything that you guys do. Um, you send me the sweetest little messages and reach out to me and leave wonderful comments and you just have no idea how much that means to me. Um, it, it lets me know that I'm doing the right thing and confirms to me that the vision that I had uh, a couple of years ago, this is what I needed to do, okay? And started it up just a little bit over a year ago. And um, I really do appreciate everything. So with that said, my friends, as I always say, merry we did meet, merry we will part until we merry meet again. Be well and walk in love and light, everybody. Bye. Mm -hmm.